Anthony, welcome to the program. Cherry, good morning. How are you? Do you know I was listening? Uh, my wife is a um, Kerry woman, or she bought one morning Kerry, but she say, she says she's a Kerry woman because her father came from Kerry. Oh, well, that's good. Very uh, high. But anyway, she has radio carry on quite a lot on the computer. Yeah. And there's a rivalry between Kerry and Mayo Radio. Kerry Radio and Mayo Radio. No wonder we wear out computers pretty you see quick. They, they, they've spread up the Midlands as well because they took over oh. Shannon's side, which is Roscommon yeah. and Cavan and Leitrim. Yeah. And, oh, I can tell oh, you, they're spreading. You watch out in Mayo because they're I coming know. your way. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chaffee. <laughs> <laughs> um, have, you, uh, have you met uh, Denise McConville? I have met Denise many times. Wonderful yeah, person. She's a, she is an exceptionally nice lady. Yeah. And her, um, I knew her dad. I met her dad, of course. Yeah, her dad was the editor of the Terry Man, wasn't he? He was, and deeply involved in the Rosa Tralee yes. uh, story in the early days. He was, he was uh, a big performer. Anthony, how many years has the Rosa Tralee been in existence now? Uh, this is our 60th year. 60 years. In fact, Same age as himself. Come here, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> Jerry Springer might be that age, but I, I, I don't know. No, no, this isn't Jerry. Well, that old, that old, <laughs> he's, he's older than that. Jerry, Jerry Quinn couldn't be that age. <laughs> no, I don't have. A, I, I wish better quality guests on my yeah. program than Springer. <laughs> well, I'm a year, I'm a year or two ahead of you, so I'll let you know what's coming quietly. Okay, so sixty years. Sixty um, years. Yeah, and how long have you been with the? With the um, well, I've been, I've been involved uh, formally fifteen years, but myself and Una. Um, Became inebriated for many, many years before that at the Rose Tree Festival because we, we went out to Tralee in 1983. In fact, we went out to the south of Ireland from Longford and Roscommon in 1980, and we used to go to the Rose Tree from then on. Uh, but I've been involved 15 years now. It um, is a, it is a huge attraction, even a television attraction in Ireland, isn't it? Yeah, it's become, in a sense, primarily a television event uh, in Ireland because it's such a popular show and it, it goes out over five hours, which is a phenomenal thing on television. You know, in, in the off season, at the wrong time of the of the evening, it still manages to to um, you know build up a huge audience, and of course that helps support it in a lot of ways. But its real strength is the fact that it has. You know, we we have centres all over the world. Yeah, it's, and, and it's televised not just in Ireland, right? Uh, it's, it's on RT, right? It, it, yeah, it's on RT and it's online, uh, mm -hmm. but it's a live TV show, which is a rare thing. You know, you're putting on a, a live TV show in a big, in what we call the dome, which is really a big, huge marquee, and you have all the the lineup and all the excitement associated with the TV crew coming to town. And they, they've got they've got to like Kerry, and, and, and they come earlier every year and stay later every year. So it's, oh yeah, it's, and in years gone by, didn't a fellow named Gabe Byrne host it? This show from Gay Gay Byrne did. And, but, yeah. and Gay Byrne really put it on the map from a he TV would be like the Johnny Carson of American television, wouldn't he? He, he would. He even he even ran longer possibly than Johnny. And you had Terry Wogan, uh, who ran was the MC for a few years before that and, and he went like down Brandon to, from he went to England, didn't he? he did. Terry Wogan. He, Terry Wogan was the biggest um, radio star in England for about twenty years. Uh, mm -hmm. Limerick man. Um, so we've had a we've been what, blessed with, with MCs over the what, years. what kind of what kind of changes or have you stayed pretty much with the old rules, regulations? Everything has stayed pretty much the same, has ah, it? Well, look, life has changed, and because you're you're you're, you're really, you, you know, your light is shining through the prism of a prism of, of uh, women in their early twenties. Typically, uh, it reflects what they are every year and and the way they are thinking. So Ireland has changed phenomenally. Um, uh, believe it or not, I went to school through the fields in my feet one time. Uh, now we only we only did it for a bet, but we did it anyway. But I, you know, I came from a simpler time as you probably did, and um, Our, Ireland is a very different place now. Roscommon and Ross Mayo. Common. Anthony, on the Rossies. remember that? On the Rossies. No, Ross you're younger Mayo. than I am, but by golly, I'd say, compared to today, I don't know if the kids could stand it, what we went through. But we thought it was quite normal, and we thought we were well off. I'll tell you one thing: we we we, I we, we were we, we were very happy people, or we thought we were any much of half the battle. <laughs> but the, the rose really reflects young women in their twenties mm -hmm. at any particular time. However, I, I had the great pleasure of being with the original Rose of Tralee, um, who came all since 1959, Alice O'Sullivan, who was Dublin girl of Tralee parents, and uh, she's still to the good. And if you talk to her, she would be still, she'd still reflect something magic about what the Rose has. If you become a Rose of Tralee, you need to be a significantly capable person. And this lady would, uh, Knock the spots off you fairly quickly if you if you strayed uh, into the sort of uh, places that I tend to stray when I waffle a bit. But she still hikes. She still um, 
She's involved big time in the community, and she reflects. How old is she? Uh, I'm not going to say because I'll be afraid of her. <laughs> yeah. uh, when I meet her on the Brandon car park again, she Let's might not was How many years she well, was? Well, look, in 1959, she was she was maybe 20. Put it that way. Oh, she's uh -huh. 80 years old. I tell you, she's, too old for she's me. still active. <laughs> still active. <laughs> This one. She's always shaking her. She has, she she has a, Connie has a habitual shake of the head. I, 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 when I'm I, I, interviewing people on Sunday morning, she starts cringing. She said, I don't know what you're going to say next. You know? I'll tell you one thing now. If Alice was here, she'd put manners on you very oh, quick. I, I can't tell would. you that. I but you know, a funny that. thing happened last night. I was talking to Shannon Enoch. You remember Shannon? Uh-huh. And, uh, now, you talk about a lady with a, an educational background. Oh, my God, I was looking at a resume. But that's not what I found the most interesting about her. She told me that her grandparents came from Foxford, County Mayo, five miles from where I grew up. Yeah, they are now. And the first pub I ever took a, a drink in when I was 14 years old, some people would be horrified <laughs> to hear that, was an O'Hara's <laughs> pub in Foxford, and it was her great grandparents that owned the pub. Oh, that's amazing. That's, uh, and, and that's typical. Every Rose event you go to, you'll get stories yeah. from people from different generations because the thread's going through generations and it's, it comes through with roses, you know, because their aunt or their granny or their whatever. But I will, Anthony, I will tell you though, reading those um, resumes or biographies, whatever you want to call them, these things are unbelievably excellent of every one of them. And year after year, it seems to the standard seems to get higher and higher. What I would say about that is, you know, that's the way life has gone. People tend to have, you know, masters and degrees, and uh, something that would have been quite extraordinary when, you know, 30, 40 years ago. But it's the essence of the people that you're looking for, not their, not the bells and whistles. It's it's the person you're looking for, and yeah. they they have remained the same. I would say. And things have different generations, but they're yeah. the same. Uh, yeah. the, you know, they need a generosity of spirit, and they need to have the capacity to go into a room and, and speak to people in a in in a real genuine way. Uh, and when they go away from that person, hopefully that person will say, there's an exception. I'd love to know that and person. all of those girls that spoke last night, oh, they're great they people. were just brilliant. They're great They people. really were. Yeah. I was so proud of them. Yeah, you know, again, us and the older, uh, those of us in the older generation, we remember when a great school education was a great thing, just like you said. That's right. That's uh, right. Uh, most of the immigrants that came here, they left Ireland, they left a fourth, fifth uh, grade education. And a lot of them did well. But again, it was a challenge, it was a bigger challenge. Now, the younger people in Ireland today, and here, and the young Irish Americans, they are highly educated, and they're going out into the world and really making a mark for themselves. But they're highly educated and they're confident, in a confident, way that maybe right. we weren't. Now, I'd have to say that Irish people were always smart. They, were always, they always uh, valued their education, and even if it didn't go to university that time, they were still smart people, as has been proven by what they achieved mm -hmm. uh, at home and abroad. But it's great to see young people now getting the opportunities that they get. It's a, it's, it's a different world. Now, it's moved on and, and mainly for the better, I think. This is the, your first trip to Cleveland? It is. So, and, uh, so we, uh, we must have earned a pretty good reputation with the Rose of Trali, the, the headquarters in Trali, to bring you and Una out. You must thank a lot of us to make the journey. Um, well, I think a lot of you, for a number of reasons, before I ever came here, I knew Mike Killeen very well because he, he's kind enough to come over every right, year. Yes. Um, and we're we're unusual in the sense that um, Westlake and Tralee are twinned and have been twinned for the past uh, ten years odd, and that gives us a special, uh, I suppose, uh, contact and, and reason to be in contact all the time. So the relationship we have is strong. And the other thing is that this centre is exceptionally well run because you've got people like Michael involved um, who put their who put the community behind it. It's very much a community event. You've got a lovely community hall uh, that will put us to shame in Ireland, and you've got a, you know you it's fascinating. Myself and Una have been touring around um, Westlake and, and the bigger city city area, and America, there's no doubt about it, have many has many advantages maybe over the older country. Um, We'd be proud of what we have at home, but really the, the infrastructure you have here and the capacity that uh, your council have here uh, to build a community properly from the ground up is something to see, and it's very impressive. And, and the Rose of Tree um, in uh, Cleveland and in Ohio reflect that. You know, you, they're, they're coming from a serious hinterland here. And the nice thing is we're covering the whole state of Ohio now. Yes, absolutely. Which is good. We had um, somebody from Marietta. That was, mm -hmm. uh, was that Morgan? Yes. 
Was it Morgan? Yeah. Uh -huh. I got, I'm not, I got, the reason I know this, I have the Morgan in front of me. names here. <laughs> um, but again, uh, th thank you for coming. And I want to say hello to Una. Very and important. I, I want to find out how a Longford woman fell in love with a Ruscan. <laughs> Una, Hi, what, how are you, what, Jerry? What's, what's your reason for this? Do the, do the, uh, the Longford people say, what are you doing marrying a foreigner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he always claims that he saved me by bringing me into County Roscommon. <laughs> do you know, I think I might have told this to Anthony last night, the president of the Westside Irish Club here is from Roscommon. His name is John O'Brien. Okay. And his son publishes this oh, paper. Oh, yes, I met him. Yeah. But uh, one thing about John is in 1953, John O'Brien played football, county football, for the Roscommon team. And I think they won the All-Ireland that year. I think late 53, if Kerry didn't win it. 42 and 3, I think, was, was Roscommon, yeah. No, 53. 53. Yeah. Was 53 Roscommon? No, no, 42 and 3 Roscommon, I think. Oh. 43 and 4. Yeah. But anyway, he played county football. Great athlete. Okay. John is, I think, 84 or 85, and he's still running two or three miles every day. Wow. Great man. Oh, great man and great running, and runs the Westside Irish American Club. Um, where, where did you and uh, Anthony meet? We met in college. Uh, we were both uh, doing a course in Athlone Regional College, uh, industrial engineering course, and there were 32 fellows in the class, and I was the only girl. Oh my yeah, yeah. That must have been quite. <laughs> I was, was, very, he, was he a very aggressive character? <laughs> absolutely not. I was very popular with most, most of the fellows, in fairness, because I was the, the centre of attention. He was the only one that totally ignored me, and <laughs> that's why I started looking at him and saying, what's wrong with him? <laughs> tell you there's a lesson here. There is. <laughs> young, young men. And, and he didn't do it deliberately, he just wasn't interested. He, <laughs> I didn't think I had a chance, though. <laughs> 32, you won. <laughs> yeah. I well, I think you won, the, you won a great prize. You won the lottery. Oh, yeah. thank yeah. you very much. So you did I. Really did. So uh, do you stay pretty much involved in what he does with the Rose of Trelly? Uh, I stay involved th in this part of it. I don't get involved in the decision-making or any of the organisation. But once it comes to the, the public side of it, the PR side of it, I get involved and I go around to as many centres as we can get to and nice. uh, meet the people and greet the people and, you know, it's a lovely thing to do. It takes up most of our summer, but that's fine. But it's a, I'd say it's a year-round endeavour. Oh, it is, yeah. And, and certainly from the from this time of year until it, the festival's over at the end of August, it's pretty much full-time. Every weekend we're travelling somewhere, usually in Ireland now, but it's still... How, how many people show up at the Dome? for the event itself? Or how many people does the dome hold? Oh, no. 2,000. Yeah, over over 2,000 2, uh, seated. So yeah. it's a big hall seated. And we put about 20,000 through it for all the, you know, the, the events that, that are on for the week. Yeah. 20,000 people yeah. To, yeah. to a small town. Oh yeah. What's and, the population and, and, and of Trelly normally? It's about 26, yeah. 7,000. Is it that big? It, it is. is. Yeah. It is. It's so you double the, the population on that week. On that week <laughs> we, we do. We do. Now Kerry, of course, the tourist Oh, yeah. County anyway, so, so Danielle is going to have a lot of people watching her. It should be okay in October, right? Oh perfect. yes, oh, oh yeah. yeah, perfect, okay. yeah. And Spain lovely. also. We're Spain going to go to Spain. Beautiful. We go to Spain. And then we're going to go across to Ireland. Spend oh, five days in Ireland. And we're going to be <coughs> heading down to Kerry. That's be. great. So expect sunshine all the way down in Kerry. Oh, oh good. good. <laughs> <laughs> no rain. Uh, Mike and. Uh, I call you, I almost called you Mike Keneally. Mike Keneally was an old friend of mine. Mike, Mike Keneally will come over here. I want to talk to you. You must be very happy, Mike, but the only complaint I have, do you want to hear the complaint first or do you want to hear all the compliments first? Actually, is Ashley here to hear the complaint? I know, right, <laughs> right, right, right. That's right. That's to take hard. care of it. <laughs> all I'm saying is the pot of spuds last night wasn't big enough. Ah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll correct that in the future. I wanted more spuds. <laughs> But it was fancy, Mike. I tell you something. It was like dining at one of those fancy highfalutin restaurants. Food was good, but I like to be able to shovel a big spoonful of mashed potatoes into my plate. Spoonful, huh? Big spoon. A shovel. Bowl full. We'll make the correction. All right. No, the food was really very good, though. It was good. It was excellent. Now, who's the caterer on there? Driftwood Catering. Who? 
driftwood. They own uh, Lake Washington over in uh, mm -hmm. Little Italy, and they, they own a five or six restaurants. Yeah, Mike, this is uh, this has been, I think, number number nine for you, or number eight. This is number nine. Number nine. It was very good. I think everything mm -hmm. seemed to go very well. Yeah. And as always, you and Karen and the whole staff, you all did a wonderful job. You really did. Whereas a whole bunch of people do a whole bunch of things, and uh, if you've run those, which you have, similar type of affairs. You realize there's a lot more work to be done than meets the eye. A lot, a lot behind but I, I gotta keep scenes. up with this guy over here, Anthony, because oh, I'm, yeah. I'm amazed. It looks like it's a very easy job, and that means you've done a hell of a good job. Because look it at the wife he has driving him. <laughs> 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 she, she's relentless. Uh, you yeah, followed her dear. I am. Uh, my wife is awesome. You better not make her mad, Anthony, because you know, she does a lot of great like stuff for you. Uh, my wife, Karen, too, gives me uh, oh, quite a bit of um, advice. Karen and always does a smile at you, though. I know she is. Get over here, Mike. She's a big smile on her face. <laughs> better do it. And uh, the next quarter is Dummy. Get over here. Yeah, Pay right. attention. And she, she uh, gives me direction. Uh, everything went well. Uh, Mary Agnes Kennedy did a lovely job, as, oh, she's as, great. She, as she always does. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was really impressed with the, the en entrance. I, like, I don't like to call them contestants. I like to say entrance, the, uh, the roses. They were wonderful, Mike. They really were. Well, it's Every their day, and uh, we want to honor, obviously, our roses that are present, and we also want to make sure it's a special day for every one of our applicants. And I think they. We work hard to treat them right, Ashley especially, and uh, Katie. Is, uh, uh, and, is our, uh, and Bridget did a wonderful job too. Bridget as an MC is outstanding. It, I mean, she just she can uh, keeps the crowd in, interested. I told it really her. Really helps the girl. Afterwards, I told her I'm going to write her jokes for her for next year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's not everything was perfect. I think we're okay, though. The one bad, you know. <laughs> I told her that afterwards. I don't They're know. They're better after about three know, Guinness. She, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. If, I think she took it okay. Yeah, she, she'll, she'll live through it. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a successful event, and of course, having Anthony and Una here was a really a special treat for us. This is the first year. Do you think we can get them to come over every year now? It might be hard. Well, Anthony? Anthony points to <laughs> Una. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm coming over in the summer the next time because I, they, they oh, tell me there's beautiful flowers grow here during the right. summer and no ice on the lakes. So um, you got to see our Irish cultural garden. you got to see it. Are you going to get them to it today? Uh, I might be able to squeeze it in. It's, yeah, it's not the same as when it's in the you know, spring. The summertime is when it's really nice. Summertime, but, but we have a, a thing called the Poets Court. All the famous oh. Irish poets, we have a monument to each poet. Oh, really? uh, Fantastic. Uh, uh, in, in a courtyard. And uh, the focal point of the garden is a Celtic, Celtic cross, a Celtic cross, as you call it, in stone, and then grass growing in, in all the openings of oh. the cross. So, I'll tell you one thing, though, do you come to a place summer or winter? You know, you, you, you can't have it everywhere, but uh, the nature of the people here I'd be impressed with. They're decent, nice, friendly people. We are, Anthony and Mike tell you this, we are a small community. We're not like New York or Chicago. Yeah. And a lot of people know each other. And we know yeah. the history of the families. And you never know, if you say it something shows. about somebody, that you, now you might be related to you. Even. Exactly. You don't know it's like a, lot, <laughs> a lot of mingling in the families. We're, and we're all very close. And we go to the funerals and the wakes and the weddings. Uh, we, are, we are a great community. Mm -hmm. As, um, but we're also a great nationality community. Debbie Hansen, who runs a website called ClevelandPeople.com, she says that we're like the toss salad of nationalities here. That she uh, she documents, I think it's 149 nationalities on her website, and the Irish are pretty dominant on that. So if you ever get look it up, ClevelandPeople.com, it's a wonderful website and it gives a pretty good overview of, of the Irish, of all the nationalities here in Cleveland. So we are a great community and we're very proud of it. And I'm glad to hear you say that, that that shines through. It does, that, it does, it does. And it might be the Mayo touch. There's a, there's a dominance of Mayo people. Well, we all love all our kind of As a common man, I had to, had to keep them on their toes a bit, but they were coming yeah. from all sides. It's like the, 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 the future ambassador to Ireland, Eddie Crawford. He, we, we made him, he, his people came from Cork. But we uh, honored him as Mayo first of the year a few years ago because he has done so much for the community. And uh, he was instrumental 
in getting the restoration of our garden going again. You might get a chance. I'd love you to get a chance to meet him, but he's busy. But if he becomes the ambassador, which we're waiting for the Senate confirmation now, he'll get a chance to meet him in Ireland. Because I would say next year, if he's the ambassador, he's going to be at the Rose of Trelle. I would say they're invited, aren't they? And if he's coming, you're coming. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's, the, that's the deal. That's the deal. Would, the ambassador will be invited to something oh, absolutely. like that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah so yeah. hopefully he'll be there. We're usually year. honored with the, with the American ambassador. Yeah, this August you know, when you have it, you never know. Hopefully. hopefully. But, Mike, again, uh, thanks for everything you do. You've really done a wonderful job uh, with, the, with the Rose with the Rose Treaty. I'll right. take that for everyone that's worked. Uh, and they are yeah. You have a lot of people right. work with you. You're, you're really we good. do, and it's you know I hate to start naming them off because I always forget someone, but they know who they are and they know we appreciate their involvement. We couldn't do it without them. Listen, I didn't tell. I didn't hardly talk to the Washington Rose, did I? No, and she had to run out. So Where's she, she going? She leave? She's going well, to Washington. I think she's got to go to Washington. Oh, I wanted to yes. talk to her. George, we had to cancel the meeting. I know, I know. I know, right? You can't say anything nowadays. But I want you now, Anthony. I want you when you go back to Terry. Uh huh. I'm back on air, kid. Man, the man himself. He just had a new album came out a few weeks ago, 75 years old, and he's still ripping it up. Jazz Blues album. I can't remember the actually, actually the name of it. Brian, how you doing? You did a wonderful job with this. Oh, morning. thanks. Thank yeah, you. thanks. I, I got a call from your sister, Maura. She said. She lives in uh, Bexel on Sea. <laughs> she, called, she, called she wanted me to make sure that you do that. Okay. And uh, we got we also got a request for Galway Girl. I don't know if you have time for that or not, but uh, we, have, we will if I talk real yeah, fast. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Well, thanks for I having wanna, me, Jerry. Uh, Danielle, I want to wish you all the luck in the world, and thank you for coming in, and thank you for being you know, such a wonderful representative of our community. We're so proud of you, and being a male girl on top of that. Thank you for having me. And, and I think I want to be the Galway girl next. That doesn't sound right, but we're going to do it anyway. You don't mind. And Anthony, great. Thank you for coming out. Absolute it's a great pleasure. Honor. I'll tell you. I know Mike. I'm, I'm echoing Mike's words when I say this. It's wonderful that you've been in Cleveland. You, you, we're honored that you're here. Well, you should be proud of yourselves as a community. It's a lovely place to visit and, and we'll spread the word. Well, we hope you do. We, we love to carry people. Yeah, here, I'm going to present you with a, an honorary Rose of Trade badge. Oh, I yeah, love that. In honor of the occasion. So thank, you, thank, thank you. Thank you. I will For all wear your support. It. I will wear it forever. Proud right there you. next to the Mayo. Oh. <laughs> yes. All right. Here's the Galway girl closing out the program. Mike Killeen, thank you again for everything you do and the wonderful job you've done on this through the years. I'm telling you, you've put us on the map. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. That's great. Right. Here's the Galway girl. That took us through a I want you to go back to Kenny. I want you to tell them that you were on most rehearsed Organized <laughs> unique privilege that when she's in Trilly, she'll have people from all over the world shaking her hand. You know, that's the great yeah. thing about well, the whole thing. She's up to the challenge. Oh, she sure she is. She can do it. Listen, I'm going to take a break here for a minute. We're going to get Brian Bigley back on the pipes in a few minutes. Do you want to?